this is your media maven, Carlotta Summers, with a look at how film can impact our society in this month's edition of an anthology series sponsored by Wildcat Film. Why? Because we're wild for film. Let's dive in. Figure of speech. The holiday season is upon us, and every year I end up watching one movie that I can't get out of my head. Frank Capra's 1946 classic film, It's a Wonderful Life. When you've hit rock bottom and you're staring at your own mortality, much like living in the year 2020, you can ask, what value do you place on yourself as a human being? What is the sum of your experience, your impact on those around you, and on society as a whole? The movie follows an ambitious yet selfless man who has touched the lives of countless residents, is weighted down by his inability to achieve his dreams, and whose imminent suicide brings about an angel who shows him what life would have been like if he had never been born. This revelation brings out the kindness of a community on Christmas Eve. Well, not just one wish, a whole hat full. Mary, I know what I'm going to do tomorrow and the next day and next year and a year after that. I'm shaking the dust of this crummy little town off my feet and I'm going to see the world. Italy, Greece, the Parthenon, the Colosseum. Then I'm coming back here and go to college to see what they know. And then I'm going to build things. I'm going to build airfields. I'm going to build skyscrapers a hundred stories high. I'm going to build bridges of mile. When it was released in 1946, it bombed at the box office, bankrupted the studio Liberty Films, was plagued with onset issues including sweltering filming conditions during the summer heat wave of 1946, and pretty much ended director Frank Capra's career. But now, almost 80 years later, it has shown everywhere on Christmas. Although today a recognized classic, its star Jimmy Stewart was difficult to sell on the idea. At least at first, but then he abandoned all caution and, well, you get the picture. And that goes for you, too. It was even flagged by the FBI? In 1947, the Bureau released a memo stating that the film was a potential communist infiltration of the motion picture industry, and this picture deliberately maligned the upper class, attempting to show that people who had money were mean and despicable characters. I mean, yeah. And its potential conspiracy with communist beliefs. Anti-capitalism. Got it. Seemingly, the film could serve as a metaphor for Capra's disdain for the Hollywood studio system, where his artistic ideas were seemingly at the approval of the man at the top. So what makes this classic speak to our zeitgeist even, and especially now, during a global pandemic this holiday season? For that, we have to look deep into the film's meaning and how that meaning denotes a better way of living in the 21st century, through communal outreach and shared responsibility through a socialist perspective. Let me explain. When you look at It's a Wonderful Life, it's more than just a Christmas story about miracles. It's what we should strive to be as a community. The film teaches us about our own mortality, strengthens communal values, and challenges American individualistic exceptionalism with the idea of compassionate and selfless giving. And subsequently, it is the perfect note to end the year 2020 on. The film's protagonist, George Bailey, is the epitome of selflessness. He gives from the moment he is on screen, saving his brother's life from drowning, a precedent for what Clarence, the angel, knows he will repeat, saving a pharmacist's reputation, saving the life of a child who could have been poisoned, affecting countless lives squandering under the thumb of a greedy miser in harsh living conditions, giving his brother a college fund for him to go to school, taking over the family business so the community can prosper, giving money from his honeymoon to help the town survive until the very end where he performs his last deed, helping an angel get his wings. This film shows the richness of a community-based influence over the advancement of personal gain, as evident by the fact that George never makes any profit. His wealth derives from a greater gift of support. In a time where we are debating the effects of healthcare for all and assisted living, where we find ourselves at the mercy of political and monetary influences that threaten our security, where people are out on the street homeless due to a global pandemic scraping for stimulus checks that might never come, now more than ever the impact of this film where community offers support mental health, and financial security is something that we should take seriously. It's more than just a film. It's a blueprint for what society is supposed to be. Sometimes value comes in forms other than material wealth. Yes, I realize this is easy to say from the comforts of my own home, but the idea that selflessness can bring out the best in humanity is something that leaves me and anyone else who watches this movie in tears by its conclusion. Furthermore, the film highlights the continuous conflict in us all. Should we sacrifice for the greater good? Psychologically, we're supposed to take opportunities for the advancement of ourselves, but what if we lived in a world where we thought of others instead of ourselves? You know, like if we wore a mask to protect our fellow man in the midst of a pandemic? It's a Wonderful Life tackles the wealth gap and destruction of small businesses as a result of capitalistic expansion and greed. The FBI is right that it is taking a hard look at capitalism, and it should. 
The parallels are even more relevant now with our current wealth gap and generational disconnect. Even Mr. Glauer's son dying from influenza and our COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 marks an eerie parallel. Maybe it's personal. Maybe the dreamer in me still connects with the grandiose idea that you can pray and wish for so much. To be beaten down by a system that says you're worth less than the paper your name is printed on, only to give us hope for the future. George Bailey's like us. He makes mistakes. The value of a man's life is not in material wealth or money. It is in his community, his neighbors, his friends, and those he loves. The simplicity of compassion is something that we humans crave. It goes deeper into our psyche with the existentialist question, are we alone in this world? Is a guardian angel watching us? The safety of knowing that something out there throughout all of our hardships that loves us and will help us in times of need. A life jacket for those suffering can be comforting in times of peril. Though there are a few points in relation to the plot of the film made by film historian Andrew Saris that the main villain got away with theft and was never held accountable for his actions. So how can this be justice? To which I say, this is valid. But climactically, the film could not have ended any other way. Potter is not what the movie is about. Sure, it centers on a theme of hardened capitalistic impulses. However, the point is the value of a man's life is not measured in the material wealth society bestows upon him. To make it about Potter is to make it about the corporation. And in the end, we all know that some wealthy individuals get away with a lot worse. As a generation, millennials are cynical to the message behind this film and why it impacts us. It is a combination of nostalgia and hope for the future that most of these types of films have instilled in us. Anne Helen Peterson discusses in her book, Can't Even, How Millennials Became the Burnout Generation, the idea that burnout is affecting our values. In this conclusion, we have become more self-centered and have adopted a more cynical view of the world. Peterson states, For millions of people and communities in the United States and across the world, precarity has been a way of life for decades. To live in poverty is to be conditioned to it. Like generations before us, we were raised on a diet of meritocracy and exceptionalism, that each of us is flowing with potential, and all we need to activate it was hard work and dedication. If we worked hard, no matter our current station in life, we would find stability. I guess that's why the effect of George Bailey's downfall has such an effect on me. The idea that we can have a dream and work hard to make it come true, yet it forever eludes our reach, has profound meaning for our millennial generation. However, it is not surprising that many who watch It's a Wonderful Life now are entrenched in the class warfare the generation before us left behind and therefore lose a sense of hope. But I prefer to remain optimistic. Maybe this film can teach us all to become a bit more compassionate this holiday season. So what is a life worth? Much more than we will ever know. What I do know is, whenever I hear a bell ring, it's not just takeout. That's a Christmas present from a very dear friend of mine. Look, Daddy, teacher says every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. That's right. That's right. And a boy clan. this video make sure you subscribe and check out our patreon via the link below if you want to see more of what wildcat film is doing visit www.wildcatfilm.com